fish inside here. Wow, there's that fish. So there you go, look at that. Wow, that's amazing, look. Perfectly cooked. The tarragon was just, oh, it's absolutely delicious. I'm really pleased with that. As a, as a cooking method, it's, uh, you know, spot on. Delicious as it was though, I didn't want to scoff it all out of the newspaper. So I walked to the beach edge to enjoy the beautiful Devon sunset with my first camper van meal. Freshly caught mackerel, stuffed with tarragon and lemon, served with sea salt encrusted new potatoes. And not forgetting, of course, my mojo dip. So this has been a really great start to a, what I hope is gonna be a great journey. All made possible by my friend over there, camper van. I think if things carry on like this, yeah, we'll, we'll be all right. All that remained was to push the roof up, climb into my new bed, and listen to the sound of the waves as I fell asleep. Coming up, I reveal the best way to strum up an egg banjo. Mm. And I show you how to pick up some beachside fast food. This is the restaurant with the finest view in the world. Right then, well, I slept pretty well last night. It's a little bit cold this morning, but I wouldn't really want to wake up anywhere else. It's not a bad view to wake up to, is it? And surf's looking pretty good as well. Might be time to go and get some waves. If the shaggy hair wasn't enough of a clue, I should perhaps own up to being a fully fledged surfing fanatic. So just off to meet a couple of friends of mine to go for a surf. For me, one of the great things about camper van living is the fact that you can just sleep anywhere you want to and you can make an adventure out of every day. And you might have to be a little bit more resourceful in the way that you cook, or you'd be a little bit more imaginative. And you just have a huge amount of fun doing it. My love of catching waves was what fueled my passion for camper vans, and endless weekends spent driving up and down the coast looking for perfect surf. Nice see, yeah, all right. Back on Monday. Oh, did you? Brilliant. And 25 years on, nothing much has changed. Morning. Morning. You all right? Yeah. All right. Should we get in then? Yeah, definitely. All right. Ready? What a day! For you, this might just look like a stormy sea. But for me, this was an invitation to heaven. Just look at that surf! Believe it or not, this is what I call relaxation. I've been doing this for years with my surfing buddies Simon and Justin. And this stretch of Devon coast is ideal. Waves that have been created by storms thousands of miles out in the Atlantic are channelled into these idyllic bays. Oh, so much fun. Now, since I've got the van, I've drawn the short straw, I've got to make breakfast. And that required some careful planning. So the secret to cooking in a camper van is to be really well organised. Everything out that you're going to need, ready before you start. This morning was the first time I'd used my new cooker, and I was making an old faithful recipe, exploding egg banjos. I don't want to overcook these eggs because we need to keep those yolks nice and runny. The eggs need to be cooked sunny side up and supplemented with a healthy dollop of brown sauce. So whilst you might think this is an ordinary egg sandwich, what's so special about it? Mmm, that's the explosion and that's the banjo. And this is the joy of campervan living. Oh, it's delicious. You can park up in spectacular places and fry up an impromptu breakfast for your mates. Three exploding egg banjos. Oh, yes. <laughs> you might need to stand up to it, these. Cheers, Mark. There you go. That's fantastic. They're pretty <laughs> exploding. <laughs> Good, right, kettle's on anyway. Now I'd fed them, it was time for the guided tour. So yeah, got um, double bed downstairs. Double bed upstairs. 
Is that for pole dancing? This is for pole dancing, yeah, look. That's how you do. Just my size. <laughs> that looks like a good night out. So the, uh, the, the table obviously goes on there. This little spare seat, which is quite cool for the kids. So you can actually sit four around the table. <laughs> they're they're very well thought out, aren't they? Yeah, they're pretty good, actually. Yeah. And it's amazing, really, that it's like 32 it's years old yeah. and it's still in reasonable condition. Yeah. So, yeah. The challenge, of course, is keeping the van in perfect nick. The joy of reaching isolated spots is tempered only with the trepidation of driving back up overgrown dirt tracks with all kinds of brambles and branches threatening my paintwork. With that hazard safely negotiated, it was time to hunt for more food. I had finished all of the mackerel last night and Simon and Justin headed back into the surf, leaving me on my own to source and cook tonight's meal. Luckily, the key ingredients were close at hand. Picking mussels, these little beauties, is my favourite all time. Number one camper van adventures. It's free food, it's absolutely delicious. The sea here is really clean, so uh, they're as good as they possibly can be. I decided to cook Thai style, steaming the mussels in coconut milk with chilies, garlic, spring onions and ginger. This is certainly a lot easier than fishing, as long as you know where to look. The best time to pick mussels is on a low spring tide, when the biggest ones will be exposed. And it's best not to pick too many from the same spot. Pick out the biggest ones and move on. As with all foraging, we need to leave a few for the future so I only ever pick the biggest mussels from each spot. This allows the rest to reach their full potential. So far so good, but once again, Mother Nature has imposed a deadline. Right, well, the tide's starting to come in. I think I've got enough mussels. Um, they really are fantastic, and uh, the lads from this morning have been surfing all afternoon, so uh, I think I'll cook them up something special. It's gonna be fantastic. A bucket full of fresh mussels is a great start but I still had my special Thai sauce to add to the mix. And there was a key ingredient I was hoping to find. It's called ramsoms, wild garlic to you and I, and it's only in season for a very short time in early summer. And because it's wild, you never know when you're going to find it. Ah, I smell wild garlic. Luckily, it has a very, very strong smell. One of the dangers of finding wild garlic is uh run over. Um, it grows in early summer uh, and you smell it often before you see it. It's got such, a, such an amazing strong garlicky smell. Um, best thing is pull over, somewhere safe of course, jump out of the van, pick yourself a load of leaves, use it later on. Whilst I'd been hard at work foraging, Simon and Justin had been chasing waves all down the coast. They had moved on to a sandy beach that would be the picturesque venue for my Thai muscle extravaganza. How was it? It was, all right, it was really good. Not as good as this morning. You yeah. haven't you haven't missed it. You guys chill out and I'll um, I'll get cooking. Oh, brilliant. brilliant. Two broken men starving. <laughs> <laughs> the setting could not be more perfect for our end of the day meal. We had no fridge, so the beers were cooling in a nearby rock pool. I got the chaps to help me with a spot of chopping, as the tide was already making its way in towards our beachside kitchen. The boys are at work, earning their supper, and uh, I'm just going to de-beard these mussels, and uh, then I'm going to soak them in fresh water with a little dash of malt vinegar. And that will encourage them to spit out all their bits of grit and grind that they get inside their shells. Hopefully, in a sort of half an hour or so, they'll be ready to cook. But be careful, floating mussels may be dead and can give you food poisoning if you eat them. Give them a good stir just to make sure none of them are floating. So if any of them float like that one, it means they're no good. Um, then you throw them away. A bit of olive oil and all our bits and pieces, spring onions, wild garlic, or ransoms as it's known, chili, ginger, and garlic, that all goes in. So what we do is give that all a really good stir. So there's just a couple of minutes to get that slightly softened. We don't want to burn anything. And then uh, it goes to coconut milk. 
and we'll just let that simmer. So while we're waiting for that to come to a boil, I think I need something to drink. Any chance for beer? What's the chef? Oh, cheers, Sai. Right, that's now boiling. Let's squeeze a couple of limes in there. So it's kind of like a Thai dish, but I mean, you could use, you know, lemon grass or green curry paste. <laughs> We're about to get washed away by the sea here in any minute now. I think we'll be all right. We better get those mussels in. In they go, as many as we can. Give that a stir. Here comes the sea again. The tide was in danger of ruining all my hard work, and so the cavalry got off their chairs and offered to help me out. Hey Martin, should we build a trench? Come on, come on, the quick, quick the tide's coming in. Not only do they have to chop their own dinner, they also have to build a dam to save their dinner from the incoming tide. How desperate are we? <laughs> but would our impromptu defences buy me some crucial cooking time? Whee! Good job! <laughs> That's quite impressive. That's pretty good, isn't it? It worked. Just a quick check. Yeah, it's starting to open. So just a couple more minutes. And we're there, just as long as um, we can hold back the waves. The homemade sea defences look to be holding, but further up the beach, disaster. Oh, I think we've lost the beer. <laughs> Never mind the dinner. There's one. Oh no, here we go. <laughs> I got it. Thank God for that. The sea was trying to reclaim the mussels, but I was determined to add the finishing touches. I hadn't realised I was putting the whole meal at risk. Big handful of coriander. Just tear it up. Chuck it in. Load of basil. A quick stir. Oh. Let's have a look. Fresh mussels. Pretty good. The dam is breached. The dinner's ready. And uh, do you know what? I'm going to stir them up. Fresh English mussels in a Thai coconut sauce. And they look stunning. Cheers, Mark. Oh, pleasure. I can taste the ginger. Mm. It doesn't get much better, does it? What are you going to do next time we go for surfing? <laughs> do you know what I'm going to do next time? <laughs> Buy a Thai table. Yeah. <laughs> I would hazard a guess, despite the small problems with the tide, nearly taking dinner away from us, that uh, this is the restaurant with the finest view in the world. What do you think? Definitely. Same again next week? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. White wine and cream next week. Oh. <sighs> you do puddings. <laughs> next time on One Man and His Camper Van, I take my camper van to one of the most beautiful forests in Britain. Wow, it's so great to be back here in the new forest. I go foraging for my dinner. That's an absolute cracker. And will my tiny campervan kitchen allow me to make a classic French dish with a rather unusual local twist? <laughs>